Before you have alerts to triage, you first have to have alerts. So where do those come from? In this video, what we're focusing on is how to get alerts into Reflexor using something called inputs. So in Reflexor, we use inputs to grab things outside of Reflexor and bring them in. Now, for this video, I'm specifically going to talk about inputs in the form of reaching over and grabbing alerts and getting them into our alert queue. Like right now, what I'm looking at is a screen of Windows alerts, whether that's potential malicious PowerShell, maybe that's suspicious process execution, user activity, and that's fine. But I want to walk you through how I would bring in a new source of alerts, specifically Suricata IDS. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to figure out what that data looks like outside of Reflex. In my instance, I have an OpenSearch cluster, think Elasticstack, but it's the OpenSearch variant, that has alerts pre-captured in an index called logstash Suricata. Now, inside of that, I could have had stats, flow data, and all sorts of things that are not actually alerts. So I am going to have to be a bit more specific, such as only show me things that have an event type of an alert. From there, I still need to figure out what data might be helpful for the analyst to see when they look at these alerts. So I'll have things, of course, like destination IP, destination port, source IP, source port. Uh, maybe the category could be very helpful. And the actual rule that triggered that, that's actually surprisingly helpful. And then, of course, the rule name, which is this signature field. So using this information, I'm going to plug it into Reflex and pull them into Reflex. And to do that, I'm going to go under System on the left menu, Inputs. And I'm going to create a new one. Currently, I have one that's bringing in Windows alerts using an alert engine called ElastAlert. Don't want to deal with that. That's what you were looking at in the queue before. I'm going to create a new input. This is going to be my Suricata IDS alerts. Now, I can put a description. You know, these are the alerts from the lab systems. I can tag it with whatever I want. Here, I just added a tag of lab. And then this second tab is kind of where I need to specify how to go get these alerts. Now, right now, what I'm doing is I'm using an open search cluster. So I'm effectively using the backend Elasticsearch calls to grab this data. And so then I can start plugging in mines at an Elasticsearch host at 9200, except for it's not really Elasticsearch. I'm running OpenSearch. So I'm going to flip the distribution to OpenSearch. My index I showed you a second ago was Suricata. That needs to match up here at the top. And then I need to start specifying, is there a filter? Well, for me, I don't want all Suricata logs. I only want Suricata alerts. So I can go in here, find where it says alert. It is right here. This field, colon, alert. So that's going to limit it with the Lucene filter. I'm going to pull via HTTPS. I'm using authentication. My cert path, that is going to be a little bit different. This is what it this is where the CA, if you're doing certificate verification, you have to be pretty specific where yours at. J C A C A dot cert. And let me make sure I've got that path right. Yep. Yep, okay. And I'm going to do verification of host name and I require TLS verification. This again says that the use TLS, but I hear I'm doing mutual authentication. Um, well, sorry, verification of the server. And then down here, I need to start plugging in what fields give me the title, the description, and so on. The title for me would be the signature, this right here. I'm going to grab that field. The description, well, this can kind of be whatever you want. For me, for now, I'm just going to actually put the rule itself. 
We'll see what this looks like here in a second. The reference field is a unique value per alert. Since I'm using open search, I'm just gonna cheat and use the built-in underscore ID field. You technically could use any field that's unique though. The severity, well, this is, let me find this, severity right there. And timestamp, that defaults to correct. And I can add other fields to bring in as tags, signatures, I'll cover that in a different video, signatures, or static tabs. Again, this input has to deal with my lab. This would add a tag of lab to every alert that came in. I'll go ahead and leave that be. Tags are fields that you want to search on, but you don't need to track history. So for example, I'm just to show what this would look like. I'm going to bring in the category as a tag because I'm not tracking the history of this, but I want to be able to search on it. And I want the analyst to see that. So I'll bring that in as a tag. And maybe let's add one more in here. Let's add um, the interface and maybe sensor that this came from, just as an example. So that was the interface. The sensor this came from was, let me find it here, here we go, this. So I'm going to bring those in so that they're visible and filterable. I'm not going to do anything with the signatures, I'll cover that in the next video. And then here's where I can add what we call observables. I'm going to delete the default. Observables are things that you want to be viewable by the analyst on the alert right on the screen, and you want to track their history. These typically are going to be on all alerts. So I'm going to do something like, I know I have a source.ip field. I'm just going to call that source IP. It's an IP data type. And I'm just going to tag it as the same because tags are actually searchable, but in a different way. Let me bring that in. I'm going to do the same thing for source.port. I'm just going to fly through these here real quick. Source port. And let's also do destination IP and destination port. Destination.IP is my field. I'll alias it as underscore IP. Yep. Notice there's a bunch of different data types in here. This is an IP field. Destination IP. Now you might not want to track ports over time, so I could theoretically flip those to a tag, but for now I'm just going to add them here. Destination port, port, destination port. All right, save. So I've got four observables, I've got tags. One thing I forgot to do in here was set a credential. This would be, you create it first under the credentials on the left. That's the username and password or token to reach over to the source you're dealing with. I already had that saved. There we go. And there's the little review. Everything should be fine. I'm going to hit create. And if all is good, what we should see happen is in about 30 seconds, the agent I have running will pick up this new input. Now, actually, I need to assign it to my agents. And let me do that here. Zircon IDS. So any agents in the H&A group will automatically see these two inputs and pick them up. And so now from here, I should be able to flip into events and start seeing these come in. So what I'm showing here real quick is the logs of the agent that I have running. And you'll notice after each batch, it sleeps for a little bit and then it will see, hey, do I have any new inputs? grab them, add them, and it'll start bringing those in as well. So at this point, I should have some alerts coming in because here's some more Windows alerts, but I also had more Suricata alerts. It picked up my input. So if I flip over, I should now start seeing those in the queue. I'm going to refresh the queue page, and lo and behold, boom, we now have data. The tags that I added, well, I had a static tag of lab, which gets added every time. And I also said I want to bring in the interface, sensor name, and the category as a tag. So tags show up over here on the right. And then I had my observables, which show up underneath here. So 
title, the rule, I can hit the view event and see the raw log still. Observables and tracking are found here. And so I have data now coming in. And at this point, our input is effectively tested. It's just not very efficient. <laughs> now, wait, wait why, why would you say that? Like, yeah, I'm not talking about necessarily looking at the raw log and finding are there other things I should add as tags or observables. That would be a good idea because I would add more. Because anything that's a tag shows up here. Anything that's an observable shows up here. And so if it's not one of those tag or observable, they're going to have to view event raw log to look at, well, where's the other field? Like the network direction, outbound. Oh, that would have been great to use. But here's the thing. In Reflex, it's really easy to update these. I don't even have to mess with the agent. I basically can just go back to the input, edit it. I could add a new observable at the bottom where I could edit here and add my tag in here. So I'm going to add something like, I don't actually have to fix the spacing on this, by the way. It'll do it for me. Let's add in, we had network direction. I'm going to add that in here. So network direction, that just said invalid because I was taking too long. I'm going to hit save. Notice if I re-edit it, it fixed it for me. And so now the next time the agent pulls in alerts, I'll start having a tag of network direction as well. And that's it. So, you know, 30 seconds, a minute later, I'll now have that as a tag. So at this point, our input's more efficient. Yes, but it still has a lot of room for improvement. Notice these two right here. This is a great example. These two alerts came in, but they're dealing with the same destination IP, same destination port, same source IP, same source port, and ooh, a lot about these are the same, and yet it's two alerts on the screen. That's not efficient. So next, the next video we're going to talk about is we're going to come back and address something on the input called a signature hash. Stay tuned.